Hey music junkies, professor of rock, always here to celebrate the greatest artists and the greatest songs of all time. If you are passionate about the greatest music of the rock and roll era, this is your place. You subscribe below. You'll never miss out if you hit the bell. We do daily content here. You can also join our exclusive club, The Dean's List, by clicking on our Patreon link below for further details. Now it's time to jump back in and do another episode of our 80s Hidden Gems. Five seemingly Passover songs from the 1980s that ought to be in more regular rotation in our lives. Again, a lot of pop culture and a lot of radio stations, they play the same songs, the same 80s songs. There's so much more to celebrate from the decade. On most of these five, we feature exclusive commentary straight from the artists. So let's get into it. Number five, Electric Blue by Ice House. From the album Man of Colors, a great album. This top 10 hit from 87. It just drips with ecstasy and delight. Iva Davies' vocal here is the highlight of a song full of 80s fixtures. I mean, there's sleek pop synthesizers, sophisticated background vocals, and of course, a blow out of the water saxophone solo. And you know, these are things that we took for granted back then, but we'd die to have a pop song like this in 2020 by a new artist, at least I would. Co-written by Ice House lead singer Iva Davies and Rock and Roll Hall of Famer John Oates. Oates worked on this with Davies while taking a break from Hall and Oates to pursue outside projects. Turns out that John was an Ice House fan. How could he not be? Great band. Here's what John told me in a recent interview session about this. It was uh, ne near the end of the 80s. Daryl and I weren't doing quite so much. Um, I was in New York City at the Mayflower Hotel, uh, which is a hotel I used to stay at. And... Um, Iva Davies was there uh, in the restaurant bar, and uh, we ran into each other, and we hit it off. We had a beer, we were talking, and uh, he said, do you ever come to Australia? I said, I love Australia. He said, you want to come down and maybe we could try to write a song? I said, hey, give me a plane ticket, man, I'm there. And um, so I went, I took my Lynn 9000 drum machine under my arm and uh, went, to, uh, went to Sydney, Australia, and uh, he had a little studio set up in a little house, and... Uh, we started messing around and we didn't really come up with much. Um, I was a little frustrated and I was a little bit bummed. I was more than a little bit bummed because I thought, you know, he, he brought me all the way down and, you know, and it was a really good vibe and I, it would be a real shame if we didn't come up with something, you know, and I went home kind of empty handed. And plus I wanted to come up with something for him and his band. Um, so we decided to take a break. He was into windsurfing at the time. So we went to the beach and um, I was at the beach and, um, in those days, the Australian beaches were topless, which was pretty cool. <laughs> and uh, I, I was sitting sitting there waiting. He was windsurfing. I was just sitting there looking around. And there was this very pretty girl came walking toward me. And I said, well, I better be staring at her eyes. And she had these <laughs> blue eyes. And I went, hmm, electric blue. And there happened to be a, a, a weird underground TV show at the time in New York City called Electric Blue. It came on like at two o'clock in the morning on a on like a community cable channel, uh, and that was it. Uh, got the title, and came back to the studio. I said, "I think I got an idea," and I did this Philly thing, you know, because it's very the, the backgrounds are very Philadelphia. Oh yeah, you know, I just faith, you know, and and so he loved that, and uh, so we laid down the background vocals, came up with the chorus, and then I left, and uh, he finished the song with his band and, and did a great great version of it. Um, and a couple of years back, I went to Australia on tour with Daryl, and uh, they opened for us. And uh, I got to sing it with them on stage, so it was really cool. Now, Davies was an orchestral musician performing with the New South Wales Conservatorium of Music before quitting to form the Sydney-based band Flowers, which became Ice House in 1980 after the band was forced to change their name because there was a band in Scotland who had already established a legal claim on the Flowers name. As a whole, Ice House has had 13 top 20 hits in Australia, with Electric Blue hitting number one in their native land. It also went to number four in New Zealand and number seven here in the States. For me, for me the, the song scales the mountain in the big finale, where Iva turns, he just dials it up to 11. Electric. What an exotic and rapturous pop song. There's so much more about Ice House that you'll appreciate. They have had so many great songs. 
Go check out Man of Colors first of all. Number four, The Pleasure Principle by Janet Jackson from Janet's blockbuster album, Control. I mean, this was released in 86. I think I've said it before, this is one of my favorite pop albums ever. Every song on this album is exquisite, even the album cuts. It had a couple of songs that could have been big pop hits in my mind, including You Could Be Mine, I think that would have been a big one. Every one of those songs on this number one album were produced by the legendary production team of Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis, best in the business, except this song. Now we're gonna go in depth on Control coming up soon with Jimmy Jam, but to put it simply, the first five singles from Control went to the top five and placed in every number. The only album to have accomplished that in history, meaning when I think of you hit number one, Let's Wait A While is at number two, Nasty at number three, What Have You Done For Me Lately went to number four, and Control, the title track, went to number five. Janet Jackson's five top five hits from one album. She's done it twice. A few years later, she'd actually top that with seven top five hits from only one album. She's the only artist in history to do it. The Pleasure Principle was number six, the number six single from the album Control. It was written by Monty Moyer, most noted for being the keyboardist for Prince's band, The Time. In addition to his work with Janet, Monty has also produced records for Gladys Knight and Alexander O'Neill. He has collaborated on songs with Thelma Houston and Patty Austin and Rihanna, among others. The Pleasure Principle, the song, is about Janet taking control of a personal relationship by refusing to settle for loveless materialism. At least that's what I read into it. It has some jangly R&B guitar and a wonderful 80s pop beat. You know, Janet has some just amazing vocal fireworks in this little ditty. This should have easily been number six top 10 hit from the album, but it did go to number one on the Billboard R&B chart and went to number one on the Dance Club Songs chart. What an album, what a song. Number three, Don't Tell Me You Love Me by Night Ranger. This is just one of those high octane 80s guitar shredders with some keyboard accents and of course those big sing-along choruses that the decade was known for. Great harmonies in the chorus, by the way, you gotta check that out. From the band who would rock the world a few years later with the classic rock standard, Sister Christian. which we actually have a full mini documentary on with the band. Gonna have to release that down the road. Such a great song. This song, Don't Tell Me You Love Me, came from the debut Night Ranger album, Dawn Patrol, that came out in 82. It was the lead single, was written by frontman Jack Blades, who of course performs the grab him by the throat lead vocals. This song is about having a good time, but the singer is saying, don't spoil it by telling me you love me. Guess he wasn't looking for anything serious at that moment. Here's what lead singer and frontman Jack Blade said of the band in an interview that I did recently. Let's talk about the first album, 1982, Dawn Patrol, which is one of the definitive melodic rock debuts. Very timeless, it still sounds good. Do you remember the first time that you heard your song on the radio? Tell me about that moment. Yeah, I think I, I'll tell you, I'll tell you the moment that really hit, hit us was, was the second time, um, our second album, yeah. We were in the Bay Area, and, and, and the first album, Dawn Patrol, had become a pretty big hit. And then we released uh, Midnight Madness, and, oh, it, yeah. and it was instantly like, and it was, I remember being in San Francisco, Brad and I talk about this all the time. I was in San Francisco, there were like three rock stations, and then there was one in San Jose, so it was like four, four rock stations. Mm -hmm. And I hit, the, I hit the thing, and one of our songs, Touch of Madness, was playing on one. I hit another one, and You Can Still Rock in America was playing on one. I hit another one, and it was like, When You Close Your Eyes, and I hit another one, it was another. Like, at that moment, <laughs> at the very moment, every radio station in the Bay Area was playing a Night Ranger song. It was like, what? This is crazy. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh man, that was just, it just blew my mind. Oh yeah. I and mean, that was really, that was like, <laughs> yeah, okay, this thing's blowing up. And that's oh, when yeah. I kind of felt like it was really rocking. The other part of this song that sets it apart is the ferocious guitar riffs and no holds barred solo by Night Ranger lead guitarist, Brad Gillis. 
Gillis is so phenomenally underrated with the ax, it's just worth discussing. I mean, Brad Gillis, he's the real deal. Always a fan of Night Ranger because of him, and this song helped put them on the map and uh, what would follow. And it hit number four on the Billboard Mainstream Rock chart. It was their first top 40 on the pop charts. It hit number 40 on the Billboard Hot 100. Again, Night Ranger is so much more than Sister Christian. Go check it out. Number two, The Sun Always Shines on TV by AHA. Uh, most young people and casual music fans know this mind-blowing band from Norway as, oh, that one band that sings Take On Me. For those of us who are obsessed with music, we know better. AHA is truly one of the greatest bands to come of age in the 80s with their fantastic frontman, Morton Harkett. Okay, so every girl that I knew growing up in the 80s was either in love with Simon Le Bon um, or John Bon Jovi, Michael Jackson when Thriller came out, or George Michael. I totally get it, but Morton Harkett was easily the handsomest man in pop music it's not even close. I'm a heterosexual man, totally can see it. He had those perfectly European chiseled features with that 80s pompadour and the voice. The voice was somehow even better. One of the purest tenors in the business and easily the cleanest falsetto you'll ever hear. How Morton isn't a household name in the States is truly one of the biggest head scratchers of the decade. But in the end, maybe he was just as big as any of the earlier names that I just mentioned because take on me, is well over 1 billion views on YouTube. I think it's at 1.1. Billie Jean isn't, Living on a Prayer isn't, uh, neither is Careless Whisper or Faith or Hungry Like the Wolf, you get the point. So there's that. Morton showcases that heavenly voice as well as he did on Take On Me on this amazing song from Aha's uh, debut album, Hunting High and Low from 1985. The mesmerizing opening of this song is an achingly beautiful noise to anyone's ears. Guitarist Palwa actor Savoy wrote the song. He also wrote Take On Me. The Sun Always Shines on TV, the title actually came from Paul and a few of his uh, AHA bandmates. They were killing time, as I understand it. They were in a hotel room watching TV on a rainy day. And then the TV announcer was speaking about the weather, and he said something effective. It's a rainy day, but as always, the sun always shines on TV. Thus, the song is about the power of television and the way TV presents life. Should get that more than ever right now. The song actually inspired you two single Beautiful Day. Bono has paid tribute to The Sun Always Shines on TV many times while performing on stage with you two in the 2000s. Now it went to number one in the UK and it went to number one in Ireland, number two in Sweden and AHA's home country of Norway. It went to the top 10 in Germany, Belgium, Switzerland, and France. It went to number 20 on the Billboard Hot 100 here in the States, which is crazy town, population insane. I mean, but it did hit number six on the Dance Play Club chart. It's also used in pop culture a lot lately, as it should be. The song is just shrouded in beauty. And after you listen to it again, I know you'll agree. Such a great song. And number one, Forever Live and Die by Orchestral Maneuvers in the Dark, OMD from their remarkable 1986 album, The Pacific Age. This is one of the many examples of why OMD is so much more than If You Leave. Just like AHA is so much more than Take On Me. You get the point. OMD is one of the most influential synth pop duos in history. They're right up there with Pet Shop Boys, Yazoo, and Erasure. Song was co-written by Paul Humphreys, Graham Weir, and Neil Weir. Now, what's different about this one is that Paul Humphrey sings lead. You know, instead of the usual uh, lead vocal by OMD frontman Andy McCluskey, Humphreys was eager to record the song that he'd written lyrics for, and I guess he went into the studio when McCluskey was out of town. I don't know if McCluskey would have been there, he likely would have performed the vocal. But here's what the duo told me about the song in an interview that I did some time ago. I'm gonna show you that. Before I show it to you though, I wanna thank our sponsor, Zenny Eyewear. I've been wearing these glasses and about four other pairs that they sent me that I ordered a few weeks back. And I gotta tell you, um, I am astounded by this brand. I'm just saying that. 
I picked out my own frames. I customized them online. I put in my prescription online. In about a week and a half, I had them sent to me. I love them. Go on the link below and you can pick out your own pair. You can customize them any way you want. You can put things right here. You're going to love them. Here is the interview. That was a song I started uh, on, the, on a motorway. I just dropped my wife off at the, at the airport. And uh, I just had this tune in my head when I was driving back to Liverpool. And I stopped at a service station and uh, I didn't have anything to record this idea on. So I kind of did some notation down in, in yeah. a kind of quirky notation because I can't yeah. write, read or write proper music. So I did something that I could, uh, that I could you know, mark the notes down. And then I called, it was supposed to have been a day off, and uh, I called um, uh, uh, Pete, the engineer at the Amazon Studios, and I said, look, I've got this idea, I really need to record it today. I know it's a day off, but can you just go and go to the studio, switch on the gear, I'll be there in a few hours. And, uh, and then I, that night I just recorded most of it, just yeah. laid the whole thing down. It's such and, a uh, beautiful song. This little slice of synth pop heaven carries us along in the verses with a catchy bass keyboard part and then it drops you into the middle of a beautiful tsunami of Humphrey's multi-track tenor, Why Never Know, Why Never Know vocal. Such a feel-good tune, you feel like you're walking on air. It's like the perfect song for such gloomy times, the times we're in right now. Now, the song went to number 19 here in the States, also did well in Germany, went to number eight, number 11 in OMD's native UK, top five in Austria and the Netherlands, and number 10 in Canada. It was recently used in the Amazon Prime show Red Oaks, which is set in the 80s, and it's well worth a watch. As I said before, OMD is tops in synth pop. I remember listening to the OMD, best of OMD CD as a young kid. Every song was excellent. That led me to their individual albums. And we're gonna do a segment on them very soon where I'll do an OMD Fiver. So there you have it. Five more hidden gems from that wondrous decade, the 1980s. Leave us a comment about these songs and these artists. What other songs should we cover on here? What are some of your memories that are tied to these songs? You can hear these songs in our YouTube playlist that's right below. Also, go check out our new 80s store below. We have books and music and shirts, all handpicked by me. If you like our content, we invite you to subscribe. Also, check us out on Patreon. Help us keep the music alive. Till next time, three chords and the truth, my friends. Mm -hmm.